powerful clams, the Undrangheta. So who's brave enough to take them on? In San Luca police station, the faces of mafia catches are displayed like trophies. Mugshots of villains they've convicted, from henchmen to head honchos. Are these are these people dangerous? This is the top buffs. Are they yeah, dangerous? Sí. Carabinieri chief Michele Fiorentino and his small team know every detail of these criminals' lives. So does this mean uh, for homicide? Yeah. For murder. So he sí. was caught for murder. Sí, 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 homicidio. Homicidio and mafia. mafia and homicide. Here, they don't just arrest Ndrangheta Mafia members, they also live among them. Allora, uh, il paese, uh, the town has about 3,500 to 4,000 residents, uh, many of whom have convictions for drug trafficking and mafia-related crimes. This little southern Italian town is an Ndrangheta stronghold, part of a patch where they first made their money. In the 1970s and 80s, they hid wealthy kidnapped victims in the surrounding mountains until their ransoms were paid. That cash later bought them entry into cocaine trafficking. Local blood ties kept people loyal. Fear kept them quiet. So the commander's just told me a really interesting story about this road sign. You can see the bullet holes in it, and apparently every year on New Year's Eve, the Mafia used to go up and shoot at it to show people that they controlled this area. and the streets are eerily quiet. People deliberately avoid our cameras. Silence is a code here. The Undrangheta is one of the most powerful crime syndicates on the planet. People have been killed for speaking out against them. This police chief gunned down at 25 for challenging them. It's sicuramente pericoloso. It's certainly dangerous, but that doesn't make us give up the fight against criminal organizations. It's not a losing battle, because there are a lot of people who are the honest part of the population. They must be protected, so we will fight the Ndrangheta to the end, because we believe that it is still the right thing to do. The Undrangheta began in Calabria in southern Italy in the 18th century. By the early 1990s, cocaine had become a drug of the masses and the main focus of their business. Strong links with South American cartels allowed them to control 80% of Europe's cocaine trade. They've now spread to every continent in the world and have an estimated annual turnover of 60 billion euros. And Michele knows these mafiosi will do anything to protect that cash. What kinds of things have you found hidden in the houses of this town? Uh, the commander says they found money, machine guns, and drugs stashed in San Lucas streets. The town has also harbored fugitives, including Ndrangheta boss Giuseppe Giorgi. After 26 years on the run, he was found hiding in the walls of a local house. We had to break down the walls in order to find his hiding place. Then, when we were breaking the wall down, we noticed his leg, which was hidden. He was hiding in the back of the fireplace where he had carved out a hideout that moved using a specially designed mechanism. We also found some money. To stay one step ahead of the Mafia, they have a secret weapon. 
a room packed with details about the criminal network surrounding us. The information's so sensitive, we aren't allowed to show you. But maps and family trees help them track every known Ndrangheta member in the area. This room is really the war room of this little police station at the center of the fight against this huge mafia. They know who's related to who, where people live. They even know where they hold their secret ceremonies. And they aren't working alone. I've come up to nearby Platy to meet Chief Luigi de Gioia, the commander of another team on the front line of this fight. How important is this town to the Andrangheta? This is the house of the Andrangheta. Their families live here. The wives and the children of the bosses. The mafia controls the territory. If San Luca is the Undrangheta's back garden, Platy is the heart of the home. The bins bear the names of famous Mafia families. We're deep in their territory, and I have a strong feeling we're being watched. I let the kids are back up there. They're watching more and more and more. The commander explains locals on mopeds are often used as Mafia lookouts. So he's just told me that the restaurant that we're coming up to here is where the Undrangheta uh, stay and, and watch. So they're watching the police. And I don't know if you can see, but also up and down on the bridge, more and more children on bikes have been coming past. You know, they look teenagers, but the police say they're also spies on the lookout the whole time. And it seems they're not the only ones. Are you watching us? What are you looking at? The commander asks these men. So they're watching too? Everyone. Just like San Luca, many have chosen their side, and it's not with the police. And the wariness in this neighborhood is no surprise. This house was the site of a major raid on the Indrangheta. They're so saying that um, one of the Mafia top bosses was in these houses uh, and they were caught by the police, but they were actually found in bunkers. Broken windows show where specially trained Mafia hunters smash through the glass of this hideout. The commander explains officers saw an Andrangheta henchman push a switch here. He then tried to stop the police as at least two fugitive bosses ran into the next room. But when officers came through here, the men had disappeared. This is where they'd gone. Oh, wow. Hidden behind a trap door in the step, Police found a secret tunnel to three escape routes under the town. The bunker opening was small. One of the two escapees broke his shoulder and was unable to escape. Inside, we found two pistols. A destra, in, sono entrati in una camera. Poi dalla camera, the fugitives were fleeing down toward the sewer. Cioè, volevano dirigersi presumibilmente nella fogna per la via di fuga. In fact, you can smell it. Della, della di, di fogna. More than 30 different bunkers have been found in the area. Some high-tech lairs, others just holes in the floor. In this one, they found Santo Vitari, one of Europe's most dangerous fugitives. This gangster was linked to a feud which sparked a massacre in Germany. To hide a mafia boss, it takes a community. To find one, well, that takes a hunter. An elite unit of the Carabinieri, their job is to track the Undrangheta. They must know the paths and trails that cross this heartland better than their target. 
they must always be one step ahead. What are you looking for? Now, now we are looking for many things, sir. For example, uh, the roots, sir, because they can change every day, and also for uh, hiding for people, or uh, guns, uh, and uh, drugs, uh, or many, many things. How difficult is your job? It's challenging because uh, it requires a uh, very uh, deep uh, knowledge of the terrain because the mountain and the forest uh, are very complex and uh, harsh. This team has helped get hundreds of criminals off the streets, yet the Undrangheta remains one of the richest and most powerful gangs in the world. Fighting this mafia is a massive job. It's not just about catching criminals, it's about changing a mindset and releasing whole communities from decades of control. But in Mafia land, as the authorities hunt the mob, the mob hunts the authorities, putting targets on the heads of those trying to bring them to justice. And this man has made himself enemy number one. I felt the people chasing me. I felt the Undrangheta breathing down my neck, prosecutor Nicola Gratteri tells me. I'll be meeting him next as I find out what it's like to be on a mafia hit list. If you're going to take on the Undrangheta, you better watch your back. We were just finishing a meal and, uh, and our uh, army uh, boy ran up the steps and he said, you've got half an hour. Uh, grab what you can and I'll be back in half an hour. And that was our beginning of, of leaving because we had to get over the bridge before they blew it up. We were in, um, um, we were staying with Uncle Tom and um, everybody of course was, was making to the harbour. And um, um, mum said, yes, all right then, we'll go. So off we went right through all the bombed area and all the dead bodies and heads stuck on bridges and all sorts of things. When we got there and we got into the head of the queue again, um, they refused to allow us to go on the ship because we were not um, government um, people. Um, we, my father was employed from Singapore. He wasn't employed from London. But yes. then you ended up in the notorious Changi prisoner of war camp <laughs> as a little girl. Yes. How, how was that? Um, um, really, in a sense, excited. You know, we were all children and um, uh, meeting new friends because all of them were, you know, more or less the same age. And, um, and with my brother, he always seemed to gather people. He was such a friendly person. So it was all um, running around, oh, we've got this room or, you know, things like that. So it was all started beautifully in that sense. But um, and then we... It, it, you know, came down and down, yes. How did you cope with being exposed to, to such horror at a young age? Um, I don't know, it's just one of these things you, you, um, you do. You, you know, it's there, and you've got no choice, you do, it's do it. It's the same like going to a new school. You, you just followed, you know, what you were told to do, and that was it. Another thing, too, in that sort of situation, we had to get to know the guards. Um, they couldn't speak English and we didn't speak Japanese. And um, so it was all, you know, hand in, you know, gestures, you know, what they wanted us to do.
In the fields of southern Italy, hunters lie in wait. Their prey, the Andrangheta, a ruthless and powerful mafia. These elite officers are part of a team in Italy trying to take the gang down. Pursuing it in its Calabrian heartland. Whole areas here have been under its control for decades, providing a ready supply of drug runners, mobsters and foot soldiers. Defeating the Andrangheta means breaking that control. Queste erano Also, like politics close to the mafia, to be destroyed. The Ndrangheta alone does nothing if it is not supported by others. 30 years on from Francesco's murder, the city is the base for the biggest trial of Ndrangheta members in Italian history. Hundreds of defendants in court on charges including murder, drug trafficking, and intimidation. Inside this heavily armored police convoy is the lawyer at the heart of the case. This is Nicola Gratteri, mafia prosecutor and one of Italy's most targeted men. He is never alone. Wherever he goes, his security detail goes too. It's been this way for more than 30 years, ever since he started investigating the mafia. He's dedicated his life to bringing down the Undrangheta and paid with his freedom. It's quite a lot having the protection officers all the time. Do you find it a lot? This has been my life since 1989. Do you find it intense? My life has changed. I can do anything without a police escort, not even walking alone for 10 meters. I'm always surrounded by cops. 
Even inside my house, it looks like Big Brother. There are security cameras everywhere, even in the garden. The 24-7 security is necessary. Two of Grateri's fellow prosecutors were blown up by the Sicilian mob in the 90s. Shortly before this, the Andrangheta shot at his house. They told his fiancée he was a dead man. From that day, he's reportedly needed more protection than Italy's prime minister. There are many mafia families who would like me to die. They dream about it and try to kill me. They have become obsessed with me. His office is filled with awards for his anti-mafia work. Yet he strikes me as very relaxed for a man who survived numerous assassination plots. Is your glass, is this bulletproof? But in truth, his enemy has endless resources and time. Okay, And as we head towards the court where he's waged his latest battle against them, I'm aware of the huge risk he faces. I think it's really important to remember that despite all the security, nothing can be 100% foolproof. And the prosecutor knows that this is the most vulnerable part of his journey. We're asked to stop recording until we're safely on the road. The route is swept by police ahead of us. Every vehicle in the convoy is armored and has bulletproof glass. One of these cars has a jammer to stop bombs being activated, the prosecutor explains. The threat has increased since the start of the Mafia Maxi trial. The case against more than 300 alleged Ndrangheta collaborators is being held here in a specially reinforced bunker courtroom. This is probably the most secure courtroom in the world. On the huge TV screens, we can see defendants in their prison cells. The prosecutor has asked for a combined sentence of more than 4,000 years in jail. Do you think you can win this? Can you beat Ndrangheta? Can you dent them, at least? I don't think I can defeat the Ndrangheta. We can reduce it further, and we need other laws and to change mindsets. And as we return to the bulletproof convoy, it's clear how high a price the prosecutor has paid for a battle he may not win. He can only see his kids for 30 minutes every two months. He can never really retire. He will never be safe. I can't help thinking just how much he's sacrificed for this fight. The holidays miss, the christenings, the weddings. He can't just go and pop and see his kids if he wants to. He's almost given up his own freedom. But that's the price he's willing to pay to try to take down the most powerful mafia in the world. But none of this is enough. If Italy is to release these communities from the grip of the Undrangheta, it needs a revolution. Widespread political... Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family.
Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.